song this morning is entitled the Red, White, and Blue, and I call your attention to our flag as we be honored today. <laughs> Liberty 
to me equates a freedom. The founders of our nation, the very nation that Thomas Jefferson helped birth, recognized that they could be free as long as, as long as they live in obedience to the authority of God. Even then, even then, as our country was coming together, it was with a thought of God and his leadership in the lives of those that would give themselves unto him. And so that truth has stood the test of time. Freedom today remain, remains a spiritual, spiritual movement. The Statue of Liberty stands in New York Harbor as a symbol of political freedom. The powerful words of Emma Lazarus were engraved on the statue's base in 1903. These words are these. Give me your tired, your poor, your whole masses yearning to breathe free. Send these the homeless tempest toss to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. What an invitation to anyone that's looking for a place to come, a, a land that is free. The Statue of Liberty is perhaps the best known symbol of freedom in America today. Uh, with this beckoning torch uh, lighting the path to a safe haven for those coming to our shores, uh, seeking a better way of life, it symbolizes hope. How many of you have ever been to New York? And they will say, okay, quite a few of them. If you ever get a chance, this is, I think, it's not something that we would worship, but I think it's something we would stand in awe of by recognizing the very purpose that we have these things before us, these really these symbols, if you will, uh, that we can that we can really just stand there and just just be thankful for what it represents and the life that you and I have and, and what it means to people who are looking for a place of, of freedom, looking for a place of liberty and, and hope. And while we take pride in our nation's symbols and in the truth that we are a blessed nation, a land abundant with promise and possibility, we must bear in mind that the freedom we cherish came at a great price. And we acknowledge that several times a year as we honor our men and women in uniform, our veterans, those that are, are active duty, and obviously uh, Memorial Days, those that have given themselves uh, completely, if you will, their life, that we might have the freedom that we enjoy. Our U.S. flag serves as a reminder that the freedom that we treasure has come at a great price. And then likewise, the, the, the uh, Christian flag to my left, to your right, um, the symbol of the cross signifies that the freedom we know as Christians came at a great price on a hill called Calvary one day. That cost was paid in innocent blood. And the highest freedom that we can know comes from that submission to God. I think this is what was being reminded of those in this letter, in this Galatians book of Galatians is uh, with the cost and, and the responsibility, but also uh, the, the celebration, if you will, and, and knowing that freedom. The highest, again, freedom comes from submission to God. And we're not free unless we take on the yoke of Jesus Christ. And that sounds just like, you know, that sounds like work, doesn't it? You want to be free from things of life, and then, then you're asked to take on the, the, the yoke of Jesus Christ. And yeah, that's to be a pleasure for you and I to know the freedom that we have and live each and every day, especially in our relationship with God, that we would take on about anything that God would ask us to take on. The fact that God would ask us to do anything to start with, no, He knows that we can handle it, by the way. Amen? He would never ask us to, to do anything, take on anything that is beyond who we are. He knows our capabilities. So the, the greatest statue of hope this world has known is not some statue. It's in the steadfastness, steadfastness of Jesus who said, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now imagine that. We're to take on the yoke of Jesus Christ, but he also tells us what? He's, <laughs> he's going to give us, uh, uh, give us rest. Man, what an awesome rest that is to do what Jesus has asked us to do. 
to know the one who asked us to do anything, supplies us everything that we need in this life to, 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 even, uh, to even function. This marvelous and infinite created mind of our Heavenly Father planned for our freedom. Long before Christ came along and did what he did, God already knew what was necessary. It's interesting that God already knows you and I so much, he knows so far in advance that we'll ever probably know of ourselves this side of glory. Think about that, if you're saved. If you're not saved, then, there, then there's something else that God already knows that's about you and where you're headed to. You have a change of heart and a change of mind. Our ultimate allegiance is not to the state and it's not to the flag. It is to God who created us. And so, what did he come for? What did Jesus come? The Bible tells us that he did this in John 10, 10. He came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Talk about freedom in Christ. Talk about freedom. Talk about liberty. But it also means that if we're going to enjoy the, the freedoms and liberties that we say we want to enjoy in this country, it does come with the fact that we need to have some allegiance as well. And we have to have some allegiance unto God as well. Freedom is rooted in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Freedom is forgiveness of sin. Freedom is knowing that no power on earth can conquer us or pluck us from the Father's hand. Freedom is walking here beneath the banner of the cross, awaiting the day when we will celebrate as citizens of a heavenly kingdom. So God knows so much about us and has such a big plan for us. And while we say we can enjoy the freedoms in this life, this side of glory, God has something much more exciting waiting on you and I in heaven one day. That's the plan for every person. Every person that's born, God's plan for their life is that they would come to know Him through Jesus Christ. In this country, we're faced with a lot of decisions that have to be made all the way up to the present, or even all the way down to you and I. We make it every four years, we make it a decision when we go to the polls or every two years, however the elections go. We have decisions to make. And yet God has given us another freedom. Another freedom is that we could either choose Him or not choose Him. That's the kind of God we have. A God that does not force us to do anything. A God that does not force us to say, Oh yeah, I believe in you. I believe in what you've done through Jesus Christ. I, I believe I can live any way I want to and I'll be satisfied in this life. If there's anything beyond this life, then what if? Oh, by the way, I don't believe in hell. You don't have to believe in hell for there to be a hell. Amen? But you have to believe there's a heaven for you personally that is awaiting you one day. Think about that. Amen? You have to believe in God so much that He has a bigger and better plan, maybe in this life as well, but in the life beyond this, that heaven awaits you and I. And while we can enjoy the freedoms that we're given as we live in this country, we can enjoy the freedoms that we're given as we have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I, it's hard for me to imagine what heaven's going to be all about. Think about that. You and I are given this instruction to live in the Spirit every day. Amen. In other words, to walk with God in the freedom that we have with Jesus Christ in our life. And certainly it begins by accepting who Jesus is. We can't say we know God unless we accept who His Son, Jesus Christ, is. And we do that by saying, I trust Him. I trust in me in my life. I make that decision. I have the freedom to do that today. And guess what? You have the freedom to tell other people about it. In some countries, you can't do that. But you have the freedom, in the most part, that you can tell people about your relationship with Jesus Christ. And that they might come themselves to know the freedom we have in Him. And yet that many people in that freedom and that liberty choose not to accept Christ. Now they'll enjoy life as it is and maybe 
think that's all they need. And to reject the idea that God sent His only Son to die. That we might have the freedom in choosing Him. And yet, again, people choose, freely choose, not to believe who Christ is. Our freedom to choose that which is not of God and God comes with a heavy penalty. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. But you see, it's our choice. What a wonderful world we live in today, right? As long as we're not breaking the law, we can live any way we want to. What a country. Folks, what an opportunity to know who Jesus is. What an opportunity to say, I believe. I believe what God has to say about His only Son who came into this world that we would not perish. Oh, well, I'm living a pretty good life. I'm, I'm not concerned about perishing. Well, not now. <laughs> but there will come a day where everything that seems so good and, and healthy and prosperous in this life, and it can happen, is gone. It's, it's really for naught. <clears throat> in fact, even as Christians, you can't take it with you, can you? But we live for Him. And we can do so in the freedom that God gives us. Now, I have to repeat this again because I've said it many times and again had it on the sign before. Life has many choices, but what? Eternity has only two. Amen. It's a freedom. It's a freedom. It's a liberty that we have that we can sit here even in worship today and take in the heart of beautiful singing and the special that we've heard and, and God's word and explanation of God's word and even the invitation that we're going to have in just a moment and that we're going to uh, uh, hear God speak to us and we get to say no to it. If it's the choice. But the freedom, the freedom to say yes and live and that for musicians, please come. The freedom. See, America has some good things about it, obviously. We have made some good choices that has helped us to maintain the, the freedom that, uh, that we may take granted at times. And we have to be careful of that. But see, God, this morning, has given us some choices to make. Those who profess Christ in their life already know the decision they had to make. And the decisions that they will continue to make every day of their life. And maybe you said here today, yes, I've made a decision. I, I can tell you in my heart, I made a decision for Christ. But maybe God's speaking to your heart and I said, well, you know, there's some things about your life you have been completely turned over to me. God wants all of me. Look, we can't experience true food, freedom in Christ unless we turn ourselves completely over to Him. We could be heaven bound, but... We're not going to be able to do what God wants us to do, the freedom that He wants us to do unless we give Him ourselves completely. Maybe here this morning you well, there's some things I need to really deal with today. Maybe God's already dealing with you. But if you're a one who has not already done that, has not already trusted Christ in your life, and in just a moment we're going to give you that opportunity to do that. We're going to give you, maybe you've already sat there this morning and said, you know, I, I know I need to make this decision, and maybe you've already made it where you're sitting. Praise the Lord. God gives you the opportunity, no matter where you're at, to invite Jesus into your life to trust Him. I am so thankful you don't have to be in a setting like this. But let me tell you something about a setting like this, though, where God wants to show up and meet His people. And He wants to meet with people who are on their way or have just gotten into the kingdom of God and say, let me help you live that out now by sharing your decision with others. Now, that's a big decision, isn't it? To say that I want to invite Christ in my life, but Pastor, you're asking me to make it public. What a better place to do it, to start witnessing what Christ is doing in your life. In just a moment, I'll stand down front and pray with anyone that comes and needs prayer for whatever reason, but please listen to what God is saying to your heart this morning, your, uh, your life. That is a freedom, that's a liberty, and God wants our allegiance to that. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your love. Thank you for what you've done.
through your son Jesus Christ that we have this privilege to come from him. We're compelled to be here and we know it's the leadership of your Holy Spirit. But there are perhaps specific reasons that we're here today. Celebrate life, celebrate our independence as a country. But Father, we come today to declare our interdependence with you. Thank you that you would speak to our heart now to help us to make decisions that would draw us closer to you. If you would just stand for just a moment with your eyes closed and your head bowed.